Okay, um, in the last video, we talked a little bit about uh, turning points, and we had mentioned that when you have a turning point, essentially that's when the first derivative, or when the instantaneous slope, is zero. And we mentioned there's two types of situations where you can expect to see that. At inflection points, at a maximum point, or a minimum point. And we talked a little bit about inflection points in the past video, and everything we said was correct, but there was more to be said about that subject. But first, let's just briefly talk about maximum and minimum points. We pointed out that when you have a local maximum point, this, when you get at that, when you arrive at that point, the first derivative or the instantaneous slope will be zero at that point. Prior to that, the first derivative will have a positive value, and once you go past that point, it will have a negative value. So at the maximum point, then, there's a change in sign of the first derivative or of the slope between one side of the maximum point and the other side of the maximum point. And the same situation applies to a minimum point, except here we have a change of direction of the opposite sign. Just prior to the minimum point, the slope is going to be negative, then it becomes zero, then the slope or the first derivative becomes positive. Now, we also pointed out in the first, in that previous video on turning points, that for a maximum point, the second derivative is negative. And for a minimum point, the second derivative is positive. So that when you have the equation of some curve and you take its derivative and you set that equal to zero and you determine which values of x make that first derivative equal to zero, then you can take the second derivative to determine if that's a maximum point or a minimum point. Now, also in that previous video, we had an inflection point, and here it was in a circumstance where the instantaneous slope was zero, but before it, the slope was positive, it became zero, and that was positive again. And we pointed out that's an inflection point. Or the first derivative could be negative, and then zero, and negative. So that with that inflection point, the first derivative is zero, but on either side of it, there is no change in sign uh, as to the value of the first derivative. And we also pointed out that for that inflection point, the second derivative is zero. All that is true, but with inflection points, it can be more complicated. And the reason is there are situations where you there are situations where you can have inflection points and the first derivative does not have to be zero. And this is one of these types of situations up here. Um, here we have a curve drawn. This part of the curve is convex, and this part of the curve is concave. And somewhere along the curve here, you reach a transition point where now it is no longer convex. Now it's going to become concave. And at that point right there, that is an inflection point. But at that inflection point, the slope of the first derivative is not zero. So how can we identify these kinds of inflection points? And the rule is that that for any kind of inflection point, the second derivative is going to be zero. Now, if you're having an inflection point, because the second derivative is zero, and the first derivative is also zero, then it's probably, probably going to be one of this class. But now, if you have, have a situation where the second derivative is zero, but the first derivative is not zero, it might be an inflection point. 
if the first derivative is not zero, but this is, so therefore we want to know does this qualify as an inflection point, the rule is that just to the left of the inflection point, and then we go to the right of the inflection point, there has to be a change in sign of the second derivative. So the second derivative might be a positive value. It becomes zero at the potential inflection point. But right after that, it has a change in sign. It becomes negative. Or on one side of this potential inflection point, it might be negative. And the second derivative becomes zero, and just after that point, it becomes positive in value. When this kind of situation occurs, then we've identified one of these types of inflection points that can occur without the first derivative uh, being zero. And just to try to take a simple example of this, suppose we had the curve y equals say x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 minus 2 times x plus 5 say. If we do this dy dx This would be equal to x squared minus x minus 2. So that's dy dx. Now let's take the second derivative. We have d squared y dx squared and that equals 2x minus 1. So if we set this equal to 0, x equals 1 half. Is that an inflection point? It depends. Just before you reach 1 half, does the inflection point have a positive or negative value? Then at one half, the second derivative is zero, and just after that point is a change in sign. If it does, then this is a bona fide inflection point. So here we have at x equal one half, the second derivative is zero. Just to the left at that point, say it's um, where x is, we'll say one half minus a is some small number. And on the right of it, we're going to have one half plus a. Here the second derivative is zero. Here we're just to the left of the point. Here we're just to the right of the point. So as we go from here to zero to here, is there going to be a change in sign of the second derivative? So this is our formula. Let's try it then when x is equal to this value. So we're going to have 2 times x, which is this, 1 half minus a minus 1. And this will equal 2 times 1 half is 1, minus 2a minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so the second derivative on the left side of this point is a negative quantity. Now what about when we get to the right side of that point? So now we're going to have 2, and here it will be 1 half plus a minus 1, and this will be equal to 1 plus 2 times a, and we have minus 1, and this will equal plus 
TA. So here's our potential point of inflection where the second derivative is zero. On this side of it, our second derivative has a negative value. On the other side of it, it has a positive value. So a change in sign in value, therefore this indeed is a bona fide inflection point. So we didn't cover that during the last video. Uh, we just wanted to introduce the concept of minimum points, maximum points, how you can identify them, and at least one of the situations where inflection points can occur. And that's it for right now. We'll try to have some other problems here where we will deal with inflection points to get some more experience with them.